Hi, I'm Professor Chris Rose, the Arcane Logician, and today we're going to discuss the other solution of Russell's paradox, the one you won't find in something like zermelo frankel set theory or ZFC. I'm talking about the predicative solution, the solution that doesn't use viciously circular concepts. This is an area of mathematics and logic that's discussed in some circles, although it's not as widely discussed as I would like, yet it is very philosophically interesting. The point of this video is to make this information more readily available. I figured we'd start off by deriving Russell's paradox, but I want to note the way we're deriving Russell's paradox here is using sort of a set theoretic type notation. When Russell originally derived his paradox, he was using the system of Frege. Frege's system is notoriously complicated and hard to wrap your head around. For example, he doesn't have a membership symbol or the element of symbol that we find in set theory and mathematics today. Instead, Frege had this theory of concepts and their extensions, and although it's philosophically interesting, it's a little beyond what we're going to discuss today. I would view this video as sort of a high-level overview rather than an airtight, detailed discussion of the issues at hand especially when I'm discussing things like Frege's system or predicative mathematics. There's going to be a lot of things that I'll sweep under the rug or a lot of things that I'll be leaving unanswered. So I would view this video as more of a high level overview rather than a detailed discussion. We'll start off with unrestricted comprehension. Unrestricted comprehension goes back to the days of naive set theory and Frege although to call Frege's work naive is a bit of a misnomer because Frege's work was anything but naive. But the idea is that for any formula, that's any formula phi, there is a set Y defined by this formula. And so here we have a set Y defined as X such that phi of X. In other words, X is in Y if and only if phi of X holds. So the idea is that for any formula phi, we have a set defined by this formula. Now this sounds completely logical and reasonable. It's not exactly clear that this definition here would lead to problems. There is one caveat. Unrestricted comprehension as it's written here is not found in Frege's system. Frege, he has this theory of concepts in their extension and he has this basic law five and it's through those two that you can get something like uh, unrestricted comprehension. In addition to unrestricted comprehension, we have the axiom of extensionality. If two sets x, y contain exactly the same elements, then x equals y. Clearly, if x equals y, then x and y contain exactly the same elements, so this is for the other direction. Extensionality make sure that those sets defined by comprehension end up being unique. So that's, it's, that's the useful purpose it serves for us right now. It turns out extensionality and unrestricted comprehension, when combined, they lead to a paradox, which was first discovered by Zermelo through correspondence and discussions in the group he was in at the time in 1899 and was later solidified by Russell in uh, 1901 when he countered Frege's work. So let's review how we derive this paradox, now known as Russell's paradox. So we start off, let phi be the formula, x is not in x. So this is a perfectly fine formula, x is not in x. By unrestricted comprehension, there is a set Y defined by this formula. So here we have a set Y defined as X such that X is not contained in X. By extensionality, Y is unique. So we ask, does Y contain Y or does Y not contain Y? If Y is an element of Y, then by definition, If y is in y, then it must satisfy this formula. That means y is not in y. If y is not in y, then by definition of y, y contains those x such that x is not contained in x. That means y should be in y. 
So if y is in y, then y is not contained in y. And if y is not contained in y, then y is in y. This is a contradiction. Now I hope that was clear. In a moment we're going to discuss the various solutions to Russell's paradox. See you in a bit. Now we'll discuss the various solutions to Russell's paradox. Around the turn of the 20th century, Russell's paradox presented a crisis at the heart of mathematics. The naive, intuitive way of thinking about the foundations of math was being called into question. Perhaps the entire thing was built upon a contradiction. The first solution we have here is the limitation of size principle attributed to von Neumann 1925. And it says a class C is a set if and only if there is no bijection from C onto the universe of all sets V. From solution one arises the famous set class distinction, where for some collections we call those sets, but for larger collections we call those classes. The limitation of size principle was an explicit axiom of the von neumann gerlo bernays system, but it also underlies the philosophy of zermelo frankel set theory. In zermelo frankel set theory, if you combine the axiom of replacement with the axiom of separation, this amounts to a limitation of size. So the von neumann gerlo bernays system and zermelo frankel set theory, they're in the same boat with regards to solution one. One problem with solution one is there is no set of all sets. Now for me, the set of all sets sounds like a completely logical, coherent idea, and it's not obvious that we shouldn't have such an object in our system. The idea is that the set of all sets amounts to the universe of all sets, and clearly there's a bijection from the universe of all sets onto the universe of all sets, so the universe of all sets becomes a proper class. So we cannot discuss a set of all sets we can't discuss a set of all sets that don't contain themselves, and so we avoid Russell's paradox that way. The next solution we'll discuss is strict adherence to the vicious circle principle, also found in predicative mathematics. We have a quote here due to Russell, which summarizes the vicious circle principle well, and it says, whatever involves all of the collection must not be one of the collection. In short, when we say the set of all sets that don't contain themselves, we're actually referring to the totality being defined. And so the definition is circular, and so we avoid Russell's paradox that way. There is a little caveat, because when I say strict adherence to the vicious circle principle, I actually want to be talking about predicative adjustments to Frege's original system. In predicative adjustments to Frege's original system, you do have a set of all sets, but you also avoid Russell's paradox at the same time. Often when you hear people talk about the vicious circle principle, you hear about this in the context of Russell's theory of ramified types. The theory of ramified types was Russell's original solution to Russell's paradox, but it wasn't strictly predicative. It didn't adhere strictly to the vicious circle principle. He had this axiom of reducibility, it led to problems, but in Russell's original system, in his theory of ramified types, you did not have a set of all sets, but you also avoided Russell's paradox. However, there are ways to strictly adhere to predicative mathematics where you do have a set of all sets and you avoid Russell's paradox. It starts to get pretty technical. Things are getting pretty technical right now. So it probably would be beneficial to discuss an example. The first example we have, or the only example we're really gonna do right now, is the natural numbers. The natural numbers, just as they're defined in your regular college level analysis class. In order to define the natural numbers, we need to define what inductive sets are. A set S is inductive if zero is in S, and if N is in S, then N plus one is also in S. And the natural numbers are simply defined as the intersection of all inductive sets. Well, the problem here is that the natural numbers n are themselves an inductive set. So they're one of the objects that we're taking the intersection over when we're defining the natural numbers. So the definition is viciously circular. I hope that clears some things up. 
the idea is that this definition of the natural numbers is impredicative. It is circular. So I hope that gives you a better feel for what I mean by predicative mathematics. One of the benefits of solution two, as we mentioned before, is we actually do have a set of all sets. And I have it written here, V is equal to X such that X equals X. And the key is notice that the definition here, X equals X, it does not reference the totality being defined. One thing interesting with solution two is the set of all sets is actually an element of the set of all sets. But since the definition does not refer to the totality, there's nothing impredicative here. And so this is fine. One of the problems with solution two is that it makes math extremely complicated. I really didn't get into the details, but what happens is there's different levels of objects. You have objects at the lower level, you have objects at a higher level, and it's very hard to reconcile the higher level objects with the lower level objects. Things get very complicated. In fact, that was the reason why Russell introduced his axiom of reducibility, which basically said for every higher level object, you could just magically assume there was some lower level way to define it that led to problems. It wasn't strict adherence to the vicious circle principle. Long story short, if you want to strictly adhere to the vicious circle principle, it makes math extremely complicated. Another problem with solution two is that the universe of all sets ends up containing your elements. In zermelo frankel set theory, one of the benefits, it's, it's very sleek, it's very concise, it's very easy to use. There's only one object that doesn't contain any elements, and that is going to be the empty set, it's going to be the null set. However, in solution two, on the base level, you have many different objects, and none of them contain any other elements, and they're all distinct. So you have distinct atoms, each of which contains no elements, and those are called your elements. And for philosophical reasons, people might find that undesirable. Also, it makes things kind of clunky. Anyways, those are the two solutions. You have the limitation of size principle and strict adherence to the vicious circle principle. Which solution do you think is better? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it.